Hi, Joe. Good morning. Hi, Enrico. So my question in particular is for the over 50 uh, multi-sport endurance athlete. Uh, what do athletes over 50 in particular uh, and beyond would have to consider when doing uh, endurance sports? Yeah, there's lots of things. There's lots of things to consider. The way this came about was I was having a birthday and it was a birthday that ended with a zero. And I decided to give myself a present. The present was going to be, I was going back and read all the research I could on aging athletes, see what I could learn from this. that might help my future as an aging athlete. And uh, that's how the book came about. I, I started my blog. I, I posted things I was learning and I got lots of questions from athletes on my blog about these things. And I, in fact, I, I got more interest in that topic than any other topic I'd written in the previous, whatever it had been at that point, six or seven years in my blog. And so um, I realized maybe there's stuff here that people really would like to know more about. So I took all that stuff I'd been gathering about for myself and wrote the book you talked about, Fast After 50. In the book, I start out with kind of a, I guess it's kind of a negative perspective. Here's all the things that are going to go wrong, unless. So I went through these things. You know, you're, lots of things, you're, you're going to lose your VO2 max. It's going to go down. It's not going to, you cannot change that. It's going to go down. You're going to, you're probably going to gain weight. You're probably going to have more, less muscle, more fat. You're not going to sleep as well. And, and the list just went on and on and on. It was the first few chapters. It was all this stuff about what's going to happen as you get older as an athlete. Then I went into, and here's the solution. Here's what we can do about this. This is where I went back to the other research and looked at why does VO2 max go down? What can be done to slow the, the loss of VO2 max? And there was gigantic amounts of research that had been done on this. Excellent research. Some of the best research I've ever run, done, or ever read, I should say, was done on this topic. Research that, that took 20 or 30 years to complete. They started out with a group of athletes and followed them for 20 or 30 years to see what happened to them physiologically. Things like VO2 max and other stuff, I won't go into details here, but other stuff also. And they looked at what, what, for example, one study took, started out with a group of, I believe it was a dozen American elite runners, all in their 20s. They were elite distance runners, 5,000 up to, up to marathon. And they brought them all into the lab and tested their VO2 max in every one of them. They brought them back 10 years later and tested them again. Only now, some of them had quit running. Some of them had continued to run, but they no longer raced or did intervals. They just did long, slow distance. And some continued to race. And they tested them again. Then they brought the same dozen athletes back at 10 years after that. So now we're 20 years post-race or post initial testing and did exactly the same thing again. What did they find? They found that everybody's VO2 max declined. They're all started as elite athletes. So they had, you know, relatively high compared to the normal population aerobic capacities. They could, they could process a lot of oxygen, just like all good, extremely high level endurance athletes can. What happened was those who quit running what happened was their VO2 max was dropping at the rate of 15% per decade. 15% per decade. The athletes who had quit racing but were just doing long, slow distance, nothing fast, didn't push themselves at all, they were losing VO2 max at the rate of about 10% per decade on average. The group that continued to race, continued to do intervals, they were losing VO2 max at the rate of about 7.5% per decade. They all start at the same place. But over the course of time, this gradually changed for all of them. And the bottom line was, what you wanted, what you have to do as you get older is you cannot stop exercising. You can't say, well, I'm too old now to exercise. I need to stop. It's, it's going to hurt me. Just the opposite happens. If you stop that's what hurts you. You need to continue exercising. Not only do you need to keep on, keep on exercising, you need to do some intensity in your exercise. 
But people say, oh, well, I can't do that. I'm, I'm 55 years old. I'm too old to do intervals. I'm too old to run up hills. I'm too old to do hard group rides. No, you're not. You're not. There is no age like that. This last year, a, a man died who I never got to meet, never got the opportunity to meet. I wish I had. He was French. Um, he uh, was 109 years old when he died. When he was 104 years old, he was a cyclist. He broke the uh, world's record for his age group, people from 100 to 104, uh, on the track, the, the most kilometers that you can cover in, in, uh, in one hour. Um, he did, I, I forgot the exact numbers now, but his neighborhood of like, he did something like about 15 miles in an hour. He came back two years later, the age of 105. Now he had, was working with exercise physiologists who are coaching him, had him doing intervals and such. And he broke the old world record, even though he's now 105, he went 17 miles per hour. 17 miles per hour um, on, for in, in an hour on the track at the age of 105. I can find a lot of 40 year olds out there who couldn't do that. He quit racing after that, quit doing the uh, um, time trials and uh, was put into a nursing home where he had a, a stationary bike and he continued to ride that 20 minutes a day. But eventually time caught up with him and he died at the age of 109. A remarkable individual, remarkable individual. And I can show you other people like that. He's not the only one. There are many, many, many aging athletes out there, not in their hundreds necessarily, but in their 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, even their 90s, who are still exercising, who are still training at a high intensity level, who are still doing things that their, their children probably wouldn't do. And they're doing it remarkably well. They don't have all the problems that older people have who don't exercise. They don't have body weight problems. They don't have, they don't have lots of illnesses. When they have surgery or have something happen to them, they break a bone or whatever, they heal quickly. There's all these things that are, the benefits of exercise are huge. When you're young, you don't understand this because it's kind of like trying to sell ice cream to, to Eskimos. They've got all the ice they want. They don't need more ice. When you're young, you've got all the health you, you want. You don't need more health. You don't need more fitness. It's not, it's not until you get to you in your 50s, typically, that you realize, man, I could use a little bit more fitness here. But now it's too late. So you need to stay with it. You need to be the sort of thing you do your entire life. You never stop. You exercise as this gentleman from France did up until you're in your, your last year of life. You're still exercising. because not, not only because you get the benefits of it, but because you enjoy it. That's why you do it. You enjoy it. If you don't like it, there's something wrong. You've got the wrong sport. You get the wrong people in your life. There's something going on outside of you because we're all meant to move. We're all meant to be very active. We're all, we're all athletes. Every one of us is an athlete. Some of us are just not training right now. That's the only difference. But if you get those people to train, they become athletic just like the rest of us. So we're all athletes. It's just a matter of making sure that we continue to do this stuff as we get older. So, so Enrico, the book, to answer your question brief, the book goes into all these things that you could do to slow or even per perhaps momentarily reverse what's going to happen to you as you get older. And I just gave you one example of this, which is VO2 max, but there's all kinds of stuff I talk about in the book. So, so the idea is, the bottom line is, be active. Do not stop. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. It was a real privilege to speak to Joe Friel, such a pioneer in the sport. He's seen it since the very beginning. So I've got a whole playlist of videos from Joe right up here. Click on that to watch them. Also, I've got videos from other legends of the sport. People like Dan Emfield, Bob Babbitt, Tim Reed, Craig Alexander, Mark Allen, Dave Scott, Hunter Allen, Laura Siddle, so many. So please keep watching, like, subscribe, train hard, race happy, and see you on the next one.